Welcome to VNTV. My name is Lily Zhou and I'm the host for VNTV here. And let's welcome our District 9 City Council candidate, Sam Batwell here. He's running for District 9 and he will tell us all about why he's the best candidate for District 9. So Sam? Well, first, Lily, thank you so much and thank you to VNTV <coughs> for having me. It's a, it's a privilege and an honor, so thank you so much. And as you said, I'm running for District 9 for City Council. Yes. So are you excited? Very excited. In fact, uh, I have to apologize. I'm losing my voice a little bit because I've been talking and knocking on doors and phone banking and uh, reaching out to the, uh, you know, the District 9 for the past few months. Six more days. Six more days. We're down to the wire. And you know, as every day passes by, it gets more and more exciting. You know, and we're, we're going to continue walking and working and calling until the very last day. Wonderful. So you're endorsed by uh, Union Tribune. So tell us a little bit about it. Well, that's a, yes, by the San Diego Union Tribune. That's a great privilege. It's a great honor. And in fact, we had a, we had a ringing endorsement. Mm -hmm. you know, they said that we were uh, among some of the best candidates out of all the city council districts, which is a which is um, humbling and, and heartening. It makes me want to work harder to reach out to people and uh, share what we want to do and also make sure we share the endorsement. And we are, we are also endorsed by uh, assembly member, Dr. Shirley Weber, from, wow. uh, which, is a, which is a big deal. Mm -hmm. And like I said, every time we get an endorsement, whether it's uh, from the Union Tribune or an assembly person or someone from our community, uh, an influencer, a, commu a community leader, just a resident, it makes me, like I said, it makes me want to work harder and harder and it gets me more. It gets me more excited to you know to to continue the race. Tell us a little bit about your district. You know the boundary and why you wanted to run, to run for the city council. Well, we have an amazing district, and in fact, our district is bounded. It starts at the basically it starts in Kensington. It's at the 15, and then it follows the 15 and the 805 all the way down a little past the 94 at okay. the south, mm -hmm. and then at the at the northern it's bounded by the eight east mm -hmm. and west. And then, and then it follows La Mesa and Lemon Grove and, uh, you know, all the way down a little, sh a little south of the 94. So it's uh, Kensington, Talmadge, College, Alvarado, Rolando, then City Heights, Mount View, Mount Hope, and South Crest. So a huge district, a very, the most diverse district. And to your second question, I'm running because San Diego is an amazing city. We have the ocean, the desert. We can build 365 days. We can work. We can film 365 days. We have our fourth biggest trading partner. We've got Mexico as our neighbor. We've, we, we are truly, we're the eighth biggest city in the fifth biggest economy. We have so much potential, but it doesn't, it's not the same for everybody. And it's not the same for everyone in, in, all, in all parts of my district. That's, that's why I'm running, to make sure that we have, that this amazing city that offers so much, it, you know, offers it to more people and more people and you know and everyone in the district you know like I said our district is very diverse we've got the largest CSU right here in San Diego okay. you know and students you know are have different you know uh, challenges and then we've got people in City Heights who've been here for either a day and some of them have been here uh, you know for many generations and their their challenges are different too and there are older communities like Kensington and Talmadge and Rolando and they have different challenges but challenges nonetheless you know their challenges you know and it runs the gamut from you know better infrastructure roads to public safety to housing affordability to homelessness but we are one big city and every one of these issues touches all of us that's yeah. why i'm running because we we can do better and we've had people who who have been in office for two four six eight you know on and on years mm -hmm. and we still have these problems so we cannot wait you know. what is what is your background sam my background you know what i was born in Africa. I'm mm -hmm. half African. My mom is African and Italian. My dad was in the service, so I pretty much grew up in a you know in a, in a military family my whole life. We moved from Africa to to Maryland when I was very young. Then my dad was stationed to Belgium, Italy. I went to Germany, back to the U.S. So as I've said, I've seen you know I've seen much of the world and very little compares to San Diego. Whenever I go somewhere, I always want to come back to San Diego. You know, my mom lives abroad. My mm -hmm. family lives on the East Coast. And uh, I came here for school. I went to SDSU for, got my biology degree, my undergrad. Then I went to Cal Western for law school. And that's pretty much in a nutshell. Like I said, I have a broad global experience. And our, and our district, District 9, is truly a global community. You know, we have, like I said, we have huge African community. We have huge Asian community, including Vietnamese community. We have a student, a student population. We've got an older population. 
Uh, and uh, among the African community, we have Ethiopian, Eritrean, Somali, Sudanese, South Sudanese, uh, Kenyan, Ghanaian, Ugandan. Um, it is truly a rich culture. And I think my background reflects you know, so many of the communities. When you elected, what will you do for the people? Well, let's knock on wood. Uh, we still got the primary to go. But as I said, every community is different. I can tell you in, um, but one, one issue, there are a few issues that, that impinge on everybody. Mm -hmm. And among those chiefly is housing, housing affordability, and homelessness. Even if, you, even if you're not homeless, I can tell you in areas of Kensington and Talmadge mm -hmm. and Rolando, uh, those older communities and, 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 and all communities, homelessness is impinging. Yes. You know, there's a, we have to take care of the homeless issue. We have to take care of our homeless neighbors. There's lots of, there are veterans who are homeless for many reasons. We need to provide wraparound services. But the effects of homelessness um, are impinging, you know, from downtown to, uh, you know, to City Heights in Kensington. Uh, housing affordability, you know, there's, um, that's an issue that sometimes leads to homelessness. I can tell you in Kensington, a lot of fire, there are a lot of people who are homeless who are, who are, who are lighting fires all over the canyon. That's become, that's, that's oh a problem goodness. that's impinging on, on homeowners. Mm -hmm. So we, that's a problem that we, right now, we are not Los Angeles. We're not Seattle. We're not San Francisco. They're homeless. The homelessness issue has become uh, very, very difficult. We still have a chance to fix it if we act now. And the other problem that, that every community faces is housing affordability. That's yes. at, the, at the ultra low, the, the, the moderate mm -hmm. work, you know, workforce, middle yes. class, and that impinges on everybody. It's making our, whether you're a coffee shop or Qualcomm, housing affordability is making us uncompetitive. So even if you have, if you're an older person, maybe you have a house or two, if you have three children, you know, they're looking at a future where they won't be able to afford the city that you built. And so we... What is your plan to I've fix that? Well, there, that's a multifaceted plan, but I can tell you one huge issue is to, within, it's, it's too onerous. There's lots of regulations. The first thing we can do is begin to cut regulations that, again, that don't cut corners when it comes to safety or environmental. Yes. But there are many reports that say that, you know, building housing could the regulations and cost of time, cost of capital, uh, regulations could, could be up to 30 or 40 percent of that. So we, we can, even if it's 30 percent, even if it's 20 percent, mm -hmm. we should address that. That's huge. I know, for, I, I know developers, I know small business owners that want to build, uh, want to build by right, want to build an apartment building, yeah. that oftentimes regulation is very onerous. It prevents them. Secondly, I've proposed and the governor, this is interesting, the governor has, uh, has actually echoed what I've talked about for years. A couple of days ago, Governor Newsom said, we're going to make, we're going to make public property available for affordable housing. And we, I've offered a plan, <coughs> excuse me, I've offered a plan called the Property Realignment Commission, which is similar to the Base Realignment Commission, which we had at the federal level, mm -hmm. um, to make sure that every sliver, that we do, we do a comprehensive program where every sliver of public land is used for, for, for housing, for affordable housing, in partnership. We can have public-private partnerships, but this, is, this problem is so large that it's not gonna be solved by the private sector, and it's not gonna be solved by the public sector. And, and, and also there, we can have enhanced infrastructure financing districts. Mm -hmm. uh, that's something that you know, other people have proposed. You know, Rafael Castellanos yeah. has offered that as county supervisor. We have lots of tools that we're not using. Mm -hmm. And if this is truly a crisis, then let's treat it as a crisis. Pull out all the stops. Make sure that housing and home, housing affordability and allowing people to, uh, giving them tools to finance home ownership, mm -hmm. uh, uh, rent to own. Uh, there are lots of programs that we're not instituting at the county level, at the city level, at the state level. Yes. If you think about it, because the what causes the homeless and what causes the, the people have low income. So somehow if the government can change, can think other, from another angle, how can I improve the income of my residents, my citizens? Have you think about that? Yes, in fact, one of our, you know, one of our, uh, one of the tenets of our, of our campaign, which I have right here, is mm -hmm. uh, uh, supporting small businesses that sustain working families. Yeah. You know, most people forget, although you know, you may, you may hear and you may know of big businesses like, 
you know, or, or large employers like Qualcomm, like you know, UCSD, like SDSU, like the county, like the city, like Sharp. Those are some of the largest employers. But yes. most people, uh, close to 90% of all employ employees still work for small businesses. So yes. I want to support to expand, to increase the growth of small businesses. That's a coffee shop, that's someone, that's an entrepreneur that makes a new invention. You know, Qualcomm started as a small business. Less regulation. Le less regulation. Less, less taxes. And when, when I say less regulation, sometimes that's so simple. It's sometimes, it means going to the, if you're going to development services because you want to add a granny flat. It should mm -hmm. be, and the city and the county are getting much better. You yeah. know, the county has done, made it much easier to start a granny flat. That's a small business. What if you have one in your, what if you have a granny flat and you rent it to a student? Yeah. It's much more affordable. And, and you, as a homeowner, are getting a little bit of income. Mm -hmm. That's a small business. And so I want to, and again, whether it's starting a, we want to be, we want to make it easier, seamless, when you go to development services, if you want to make a granny flat, if you want to permit, and also incentivize. Maybe you're a first time uh, business starter. Maybe if you're, if you've just come here from another country, if you're African or Vietnamese, or if you're a student, we want to, we should provide incentives to start small businesses. Again, small businesses employ close to 90% of all people in San Diego. They are the drivers of the economy. And again, whether it's Qualcomm, whether it's Starbucks, they all started as small businesses. And we are unique. San Diego is truly unique. Mm -hmm. We could be the hub. We're the fifth biggest economy. And we're the second biggest city in the fifth biggest economy. We need to remember that. We need to start. We're, as they say in the boxing world, we'll, we're punching below, our, below mm -hmm. our weight class. You know, Silicon Valley, Los Angeles, they have nothing on us. We've got better climate. We should be building housing 365 days a year. We should be filming 365 days a year. Uh, that's yeah. a... Uh, when you do a, when you do commercials, when you do video, when you do films, those are small businesses, mm -hmm. and we should encourage those. One last question: What makes you think you can you are the best candidate for District Nine? I think we have a, we have we are unique in the sense, as I said, I have a global perspective, and we have a we have a global community. I grew up abroad. I've lived in the district. I think pro maybe long is long or is lo longer than anyone else. I went to SDSU, living in the district. I went to Cal Western Law School, living in the district. I, I work, I do a lot of work, in, I live in Kensington, mm -hmm. but I do a lot of work in City Heights and Southeast. Uh, I know the district you know, better than any of the, the other, other candidates. And I think this is reflected when you ask why am I the better candidate. It's reflected in the fact that we've gotten great endorsements, including from the Union Tribune, which you know, they said you know, it, this is a, that we have a global perspective, that we've got real solutions. People talk in, you asked earlier one of the first questions, what are we going to do for housing? Yes. Uh, everyone talks about we need affordable housing, but they don't have specific policies. Mm -hmm. We have specific we have specific policies to address housing, homelessness, uh, uh, encouraging small business. So that's I think that's a huge strength for us uh, moving forward into the campaign. Super exciting! Thank you so much. I think this is awesome, and hope you enjoy the the last six days, and then um, hope you make it. Well, thank you so much again. I, I want to thank. Uh, uh, VNTV. I want to. I want to get to know the the community more. I want to reach out and uh, reach out to businesses, to individuals. I'm excited. We have six days, and I'm going to make sure that we 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 leverage every single minute of every hour to get to know the community, to get to know the businesses, and to reach out to residents. So I thank you so much for the opportunity to speak, you know, to your audience. I appreciate right. it. Thank you so much, and good luck. Thank you. Thank you.